Good afternoon, all. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Don from VoIP Supply, and with us today also is Josh Hazelhorst from SimpleWAN. I am here. I'm really glad you could join us today. Uh, today we're going to spend some time talking with Josh at SimpleWAN about QoS and about the, the SimpleWAN product so that you can better understand it. And, of course, we'll give you all of our contact information, everything you need to know to interact with us along the way. We'll talk a little bit more about that here as we move along. I know that we're going to have a mixed audience today. Some of you may be here to run a simple WAN device with your own business, and many of you are going to be reseller partners looking to bring this solution to your various customers. Um, so just very quickly, because I don't want to spend a lot of time about web supply. You obviously know who you, we are because you're here. Um, but since 2002, we've delivered in we've delivered our services and hardware experience to over 125,000 customers worldwide. We feature hardware for more than 60 manufacturers and, and cover over 16,000 products. Um, and as a, as a reseller, you may have already seen this, the CloudSpan Marketplace, uh, where we bring uh, VoIP services out to end clients who need them if we can't mirror them up with a partner, uh, as well as a, a, the ability for our resellers to come along and offer great products from trusted partners as well. I specialize a lot on our fulfillment side of the house, which is the ability for VoIP supply to provision and uh, provide professional services um, from, from our warehouse locations in North America. We provide real-time access to manage your projects um, from the order through the delivery of the product. We also offer a refresh and reclaim program for your resellers out there, uh, or if you're out there just looking to buy hardware, um, the refresh product line is a certified reconditioned device from us, fraction of the cost, and ordering at full retail. Um, so we've got that available for you as well. Just a few things I wanted to mention as we get started, and uh, we'll keep rolling from there. What I'm going to do is turn the screen over to Josh. Let, I want to go back to basics and rudimentary. Let's talk about technology as far as a timeline and, 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 and in relation to hosted voice. Right? When we first started doing voice over Internet, right, we, what we were doing was we were adding you know, handsets into basically a Cat5 cable that would go into a switch and through a router and out to public Internet. You know, and it, and it had inherent flaws when we were doing this. The inherent flaw was I am now sharing my voice with my data network. This was called converged systems. I'm going to run voice and data off of the same pipe. The problem with doing that is voice is simply an application just like data. Those packets are streaming across Internet connections alike. Think of a, a highway, if you will. Well, if I have people in the office, the home office, the factory or whatever, streaming files, streaming media, watching YouTubes, watching videos, stuff like that, they're eating up the majority of the bandwidth. Not only that, if I'm going with cheap, public internet, shared internet services from a cable provider or something like that, not only am I sharing bandwidth with the people in the office, I'm also sharing people a bandwidth with the people in that neighborhood. So just because I bought a 20 meg circuit or a 50 meg circuit or whatever it happens to be, and the guy across the street has a 50 meg circuit, we're still sharing that same bandwidth at the end of the day. So if he's streaming YouTube and I'm running voice off of that same bandwidth, my voice calls can be choppy, they can be spotty, they can be latent, they can drop. There's all kinds of issues that can happen. So originally what we started to do is we started to deploy routers where I can configure in codes and scripts how to packet tag voice packets over data packets. Think of that freeway again, all the little cars, right, or, or little pieces of rice. How does my router know <laughs> that this is a voice packet or that this is a data packet, right? Well, we, we tag it, right? We're going to tag that packet so the router recognizes, hey, this is voice, and these other packets are data going across that bandwidth stream. And I want to make sure that voice gets priority over data. This was simply just called priority queuing, right? In today's world, we're going to call that QoS quality of service. Now, in order to build a quality of service uh, policy, if you will, I have to know a lot of things, especially when I'm talking multi-location environment. 
I have to know call flows and call patterns. I have to know peak times. I have to know the amount of inbound calls versus the amount of outbound calls. I have to create policies built on mathematical algorithms to figure out every single location and how do I create QoS policies per those locations. Now the other issue of doing something like that is it takes a lot of engineering time and a lot of ingenuity to be able to pull these things off, but businesses change. Not just simply a business model itself from quarterly to annual, but the business itself in that local environment changes hourly. If I've got an influx of customers or an influx of inbound calls or I'm going to build a marketing campaign, or I'm going to have sales guys, you know, do cold call blitz and stuff like that. I have to be able to change these QoS policies on the fly so I can have quality phone calls. If I don't have quality phone calls, it costs me money. If I call into a Domino's Pizza store and the call drops, I'm going to not call Domino's Pizza store again. I'm going to call Pizza Hut across the street. So it's a money thing when it comes to voice quality. So I get questions all the time. Can I still just do a hosted voice system and just plug it into the Internet? and not worry about it. Sure. And a lot of times there's not issues with that. So that is what we do. Uh, you remember Skype and uh, UMA, stuff like that, right? That is voice over internet. No policies prioritizing voice over data. But if I'm a single user in a home office, maybe I get a staticky call from time to time. I'll just hang up, take it up again, and maybe that cleared it out. But if I'm a business actually making money and running an operation, this kind of policies, these kind of, of, of service issues and, and outages and interruptions, at the end of the day, it costs me money. So I have to implement some kind of a policy prioritizing that voice packet over that data packet so I'm not losing business. Now. <laughs> Most of you guys on this call probably saw hosted voice with somebody's platforms or, or, or another, and, and it's really almost, at these days, irrelevant of whose platform you use. I think it's the color of the invoice at this point. However, the devices that you use internally to give me clear quality voice calls do make a difference. And where they make a difference is engineering time, where they make a difference is configuration time, uh, and, and, and really pro-serve and truck roles, and then customer support calls. So in today's world, I'm probably not going to do just voice over Internet, right? I'm going to probably do a hosted VoIP system, and I'm probably going to use some kind of an edge device or some kind of a gateway device where I can implement QoS policies <laughs> so I can have crystal clear calls. So I downloaded uh, the other day a couple of different scripts of products that we've used in our labs in our environment here at Simple Land, uh, just to kind of see how everybody else works and see if we can make this thing easier for these guys, right? And that's kind of the job of Simple Land. Simple Land is a software-defined networking company. What software-defined networking is, SDN, is management and automation. Our job is to collapse environments, make them easy to manage, and make the technology automated so I don't have to be a command line or code writer guru in order to pull these kind of things off. So if I was going to use this device, this would be that configuration. I would have to go into that device, I have to go into command line, and I have to build these algorithms. What these algorithms are telling me to do is what ports need to be open and when, and how am I going to packet tag that voice packet over that data packet. And then how am I going to create that algorithm when it comes to call flows and data processing, how many concurrent calls, peak hours, all that other stuff, right? So they made it fairly simple for a network engineer to get into a router or a firewall or an edge device to be able to pull this off. The hard part of doing something like this is in a single location environment where I have a network engineer or I have a you know, off-site resource that can come in and do that, it's fairly simple. He can come in and with a couple, within a couple of hours, he can create these QoS policies. The problem with using these is when you get into a multi-location environment, and I don't mean not having the tech staff or the knowledge and the know-how, I'm talking man hours, hard dollars. 
So if it takes me two hours to configure an edge device at a single location, I'm probably charging anywhere between $125 and $225 an hour, right, for that customer. Imagine going into a retail facility or a franchise facility where I have 100, if not 1,000 of these locations. That project will absolutely 100% fail just due to the man hours that it's going to take for me to go in here and tag this information to create these QLS policies. Some of these names that you see here on the right-hand side should probably be very, very familiar to you. And they are still very, very useful in the proper use cases. And we'll go over that here in a minute because you guys are going to be thinking in your head, well, where do I use this device versus where do I use a simple LAN device, right? Some of, some of the times you are going to need a device like this, an edge device where you have to configure the ports and the QLS rules. So as we're building these things, and this isn't just these guys, this is every edge device out there on the planet, they need to be configured a specific way or that configuration simply will not work, which results in a failed project. Now what Simple LAN has done, as again, we are a software-defined networking company. I know we're very, very popular for SD-WAN. SD-WAN is just a portion of SDN, software-defined networking. <laughs> what we've been able to do is we've been able to take those QoS policies and create them in an SDN environment, a software-defined networking environment, so we can easily manage these configurations and automate the installations. So when I go in and I need to implement a QoS policy at a specific site, for a simple LAN, since we've built those complex configurations on the back end to make it easy for users, MSPs, integrators, is I simply can come in here and go to my traffic prioritization monster configuration and either turn it on or turn it off. We've got the built-in algorithms when I talk about how do you know what the algorithm should be? How much of my bandwidth should I carve out for voice over data? And in a multi-location environment, how the heck do I know? Again, going into SDN technology, you don't have to know because we've automated that process. When we install Simple WANs and we're talking enabling QoS, as soon as I enable QoS, it allows no single node on a network to suck down all the bandwidth. So first and foremost, Jimmy can't sit in the back room streaming March Madness all day long while my sales floor is trying to make sales and they have static -y calls. It won't allow Jimmy that much bandwidth. But then I can go in here and I can figure out an algorithm very, very simply straight out of the box. I'm going to go into this environment and just have a 50-50 split, 50% 50 for voice, 50% for data. But it's not carved out as a second stone rule. When we say 50% for voice and 50% for data, we're talking about availability. If I have nobody on calls, everybody's streaming YouTube, 100% of that bandwidth is gonna be allocated for that. But as soon as a call comes in, it automatically, instantly gives me 50% of that bandwidth. I don't have to create a configuration or algorithm for this. If I'm in a larger environment that has higher call volumes, maybe call centers, contact centers, sales floors, stuff like that, I can increase my carve into a moderate, which would be a 70-30 split, 70% for voice, 30% for data, right? Why would I do that? Well, I would do that because I just built a contact center and I just built a sales staff that has inbound, outbound calls. And I don't want to have to go in and recreate a QoS policy. I want to just carve them out a 70-30 split. Or maybe I'm an inbound contact center like Discover Card, something like that. Now I can go in here and just simply click the aggressive button, and it gives me a 90-10 split. So I'm ensuring that 100% of the time I will have crystal clear phone calls. Great, Josh, who cares? Everybody can do QoS, even if I have to configure something, big deal, everybody's doing it. Okay. And I hear that story quite often as well. 
everybody is doing it. And you can create QoS policies on routers. You can create them on existing firewalls. You can create them on edge devices like we're talking about today. Absolutely. But I will ask you this, is when that customer calls you or the hosted service provider or even the ISP because he thinks he's got internet issues because of latency or slow or whatever, how do I prove it? Just because I created QoS policies in an edge device or a firewall, how do I prove it when that customer calls into customer support and says, I'm having bad quality calls? Well, Mr. Customer, I've given you QoS, where we're prioritizing that voice packet over the data packet. It must be your internet provider. Okay, so I'm going to call my internet provider. I'm going to get to level one support. Maybe after 20 minutes, I'll get to level two support. Maybe after several hours, somebody's actually going to look at my problem. And the first resolution is what? Reboot your router. Second resolution is it's not the ISP's problem. It's the hosted voice provider's problem. So again, going back to those man hours, hours are the most important function of a business. It is the highest cost of a business. And I've got my technical guys on phone calls with Comcast and Charter and CenturyLink and their hosted voice providers chasing their tails trying to figure out why I have four quality calls on a Friday afternoon. By implementing SDN, Software Defined Networking, not only am I getting those QoS policies, but I'm also getting the proof. Once I go into a site, I can go into any of my diagnostic tools, find out exactly what's happening, in that environment, from my MOS history to my network health to my packet capture, speed tests, I can go in here and I can find out exactly what is happening in that environment so I can pinpoint that it is, in fact, an ISP issue or it is, in fact, a hosted voice issue. This is saving me an absolute ton of time from a network administrator perspective. So that's QoS. Hopefully I simplified it a little bit. It is very, very complicated on the back end, but to the end user, it is supposed to be as easy as simply pushing a button. We talked about how we configure it. We talked about how SimpleWAN does it. But when I'm doing a, a edge device to do QoS for a hosted voice, that customer is doing multiple projects at the time that you're giving me my hosted voice solution, right? Chances are he's, he's doing virtualization on servers or he's doing BDI. He's got multiple projects on his desk. The fear of giving this guy an edge device that simply does QLX so my hosted voice sounds good is what other projects am I missing out on? Was this guy doing firewall upgrades? Uh, was this guy buying routers? Was this guy looking at content filtering engines? Does this guy need cybersecurity for PCI and HIPAA compliance? If I'm only selling an edge device to give me quality calls, I am losing other business. By deploying SDN technologies like SimpleWAN, I have all those technologies at my fingertips. I can come in to these sites and see exactly what they have what they have enabled, and what they're running. In this location, I've got content filtering, cybersecurity, WAN failover, managed Wi-Fi. The only thing I don't have in here is VMPLS, which is SD-WAN. That is how I connect multiple locations to multiple locations. So if this customer was one location of 35 locations that now want to do distributed file shares, now want to do inventory controls, need chemical compounds all online. Maybe they're going cloud everything. Well, we need to create this guy into an SD-WAN group so we can connect all of these locations together. However, if you just sold me an edge device to give me voice QoS, I promise you I am not coming back to you talking to you about SD-WAN because now we're talking circuits, networking, firewall, security, it's a different conversation. So let's talk about where some of these other QoS routers would work. And the easiest way to explain it is what, again, what is SimpleWAN? At its core, SimpleWAN is a firewall. It is a cloud-based firewall. And you can't firewall a firewall. What I mean by that is 
If I install Simple LAN into an environment that, say, for example, has a SonicWall TZ500 in it, the job of that TZ500 is to block traffic patterns and data. The data that it's blocking is everything you're seeing on my screen right now, the proof. It's blocking my analytics. I can't see my MOS scores. Anything under a 4.2 is going to tell me I'm going to have bad quality calls, something's wrong in the network. It's, not, it's going to block my latency, my jitter, my IPSLA. I'm not going to see packet loss anymore. Those firewalls are designed to block the analytics. So if I get with a customer that says 15, 20, 30, 100 locations, I've got junipers all over the place that I just bought on a three-year contract. Now I want to go hosted voice, and I need a QoS gateway. Okay. That is now where we're going into that edge mark, that Meraki, that Microtech, those edge QoS devices. Because they don't care about the firewall world. They're not doing the security policies. They're not doing the network analytics pieces, right? They're doing the prioritization of the voice packet. So in environments that have existing firewalls that don't want to get rid of existing firewalls, the play is those edge QoS devices. Same thing when you're talking SD-WAN for connect, connecting multiple buildings to multiple buildings. I have those firewalls in place. I want to get rid of my point-to-points -point or my MPLS connections, right? I need an SD-WAN machine. Well, you need something called an over-the-top SD-WAN because an over-the-top simply does that, the connection points or the dual WAN for failover. It's a point, pinpoint product that plays with other firewalls. Simple WAN is the firewall. So remember, when you're talking to customers, and we're talking SDN technologies, SD-WAN technologies, voice QoS, the Simple WAN is the all-in-one, set-it-and-forget-it device. It is the management, the automation of everything in that environment. So either get rid of the firewall, or the simple one is not the right product for you, Mr. Customer. Now you must go buy edge devices for QoS, endpoint products for SD-WAN, and so forth. So again, as you're talking to clients, know where the simple WAN lives and know what kind of things he's talking about when he's saying, hey, I need QoS. You need to guarantee me quality over my hosted phones that you want, to be, you, want, you want to sell me, right? Make sure you understand and ask the questions inside that network. Do you have existing firewalls? Are they up to date? Are they on the latest firmware? Is it a SonicWall TV 200 from four years ago that you've never updated firmware on? Because, Mr. Customer, that's no longer a firewall. That's called a hub. It does absolutely nothing anymore, and yes, we can rip that out and put in simple land. But if they're not willing to rip out that existing firewall, Simple Lane is simply not the right fit for that client. Now, I promise, I'm not going to kill you guys with PowerPoint. I was hoping just to get the confusion over what QoS routers, edge devices can and cannot do. And I hope I simplified that a little bit for everybody on the call. Uh, Don, do you want to open it up for a Q&A? Sure. Actually, if I can understand it, you probably did a pretty good job, and I think I got it. So uh, just, just going to go there first. It's one of the reasons I'm really enjoying the product. So um, as I show you this, it's going to have my contact information, and, of course, Josh is there at the bottom. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what next steps to take and uh, um, to let Simple Lab become your QoS solution. Um, you know, if you're an IT solution reseller, you can sign up with us at VoIP Supply, and we'll create your Simple Land account, get you an NFR unit, and get you started. If you're a business that needs Simple Land, a Simple Land solution, you can just contact VoIP Supply, and we'll connect you with a Simple Land IT partner to help you out. Um, we can give you that opportunity to support consulting, the solution design, and, and get you what you need to get started, whether it's whether you're, like I said, whether you're a business trying to put this in place to help your quality of service, or whether you're a partner out there needing to implement these. 
Um, and I did get a couple questions, and uh, let me. Uh, and yes, and a couple questions. The easy one, or super easy one, is can you get a copy of the presentation? Yes, for attending, uh, we will get you. We will get you that uh, after after the webinar is concluded. Um, and, uh, and and Matt, thanks for the uh, the thumbs up on the product. So, um, and let me just go down here real quick. And I get, did get this question, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know you covered this a little bit, Josh, but I'm going to ask you this. If a customer already has new edge marks in place or a new FortiGate firewall, then where do you fit? And I think we covered that, but I'll let you say it in, in, in the simple land words and, and go for it there. Yeah. So, I mean, as we all know, customers are not wanting to rip and replace anything. If I'm an IC admin, it was hard enough for me to get budget approval to buy the Fortinet or the edge marks or whatever, right? Now, if I want something all in one so I can see all of my analytics, that's a very tough pill for me to swallow to take back up to the CFO and tell him, look, I made a mistake. I got to rip those out. I want to do an all in one with Simple Land. Sometimes it does happen if I'm off contract or, you know, my smart net's up or whatever it happens to be. Um, but in that specific scenario, we're probably not a fit. Not that I want to pass over business, but it's just we can talk about it to that customer all day long. He'll fall in love with Simple Land, and he'll never get that budget approved. Once those products become a pain where, that, where it's a big enough pain for him and he needs these analytics in an all-in-one type solution, then it's an easier budgeting conversation because that existing edge device or whatever is coming off support or whatever it happens to be. But if I just bought them, chances are, guys, I'm sorry, we're not a fit. Very cool. Yeah, that makes that's, sense. Uh, that's, definitely, that's definitely a key. I mean, uh, and you'll see as you look at the product and, and what it does is capability is that it has a fit all over the place. But in that particular scenario, we just, you know, we're, we're just at a, we just need to walk away from that and move on and help a different partner out, a different customer out. Um, a couple of other questions have come across here too, and I think, Josh, I'm going to need your help on this one. Most ITSPs have, have us turn off the SIP ALG when we're using the SIP trunks, why is this? Oh, uh, that's a good question. That's probably more of a, a technical question for probably our tech <laughs> staff, maybe. Uh, so if you'll send me that question, I'll send it to the engineering sure. team and get an answer over to you, Don. Yeah, I didn't mean to put you on the spot on that. I wasn't sure if you could feel it. I know I can't, uh, but again, we'll bring that to our technical staffs and we will um, get that answered for you. And another question real quick about when you have an outage and how do you prove it, if it is the ISP or if it's internal? Uh, inside the dashboard is going to show those specific analytics analytics in the bandwidth graph. It's going to show what kind of bandwidth I'm getting from not only speed testing but real time throughput. So it's going to show me exactly and precisely in real time what's happening with my bandwidth. Also, if we're adding in dual LAN for active passive or active active for load balancing or simply for failover. Once the analytics inside there, the latency, the MOS scores, the jitter, hit a specific threshold that, again, are automated, that primary one Internet circuit is going to fail over to the secondary Internet circuit or to LTE to keep my business up and running. It's going to stay on that secondary circuit while we're consistently looking at that primary, primary one Internet connectivity until we see 100% stability, and then and only then will it fail back. So if I'm adding in failover, having Comcast go down on me or be intermittent isn't really a big deal. But if I only have a single Internet connection, I'm going to be able to see that in my analytics of exactly what's happening with those connectivities. Now I don't have to call my hosted provider, yell at him for a bad hosted voice solution when I've got spotty Internet. Very cool, very cool. I appreciate that. All right. Bear with me. Bear with me one second as I'm reading through to see if we have some other questions here. So, and actually, it's funny within uh, within the chat to um, another another one of our participants here has answered this SIP ALG, ALG question, um, saying that it's an algorithm that was supposed to have web services, but the code wasn't adopted correctly. So instead of helping, it actually it can hurt in some cases. So the code uh, has already been adopted by so many vendors, it's easier to turn it off than to fight with it. That was the, that was the answer we got back. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And again, if, if not, you know, our contact info is here. We, we can follow up and uh, provide any other detail on it that you may need. 
And really, I think that's it for the questions that I've seen come over. If there's any others, uh, please, again, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or to Josh via his email here that's posted, and we can get you help getting started. And uh, again, please, I'm looking forward to talking to you all, getting you simple land solutions. And uh, if that's all, I'm going to conclude our show from here. I appreciate it very much. And uh, thank you for participating. We'll talk to you all very soon. Thank you, Don. Thanks a lot, Josh. I really appreciate it. Got thank it, you all for coming.